Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Into the Sin Bin. My name is Mike Finazzo and we are coming to you live here tonight from Evansville, Indiana. Um, I'm joined with some, some good friends. We're having some pizza, some beer. We're in Troni's Pizza and Brewery. Um, kind of a staple here of Evansville. And what we're doing here tonight is, is the, the Icemen have had a rough week, right? So rather than add to the speculation, I've seen so many news articles about what might happen. And then from there, there's people that are doing articles just about what articles are about what might happen. It's getting ridiculous. And rather than just add to the noise, um, I've invited some folks out, and what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate the team that we do have and the memories that we've already made. Here, here. Um, here, here. Salud. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> so with that in mind, uh, welcome. Please join us along for the ride. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to open the floor up a little bit if everyone would kind of introduce yourself very briefly, give us the quick and dirty, and uh, what made you a hockey fan? You're, you're on the block. <laughs> uh, you I'm CJ Jones. Been a been a hockey fan from from birth. Actually, I was kind of born into it. Um, big Wings fan, but when we yeah I know <laughs> go Blackhawks <But>, yeah. <laughs> but when uh, when I heard we were gonna have hockey in Evansville, that was like the greatest thing because now I didn't have to travel to Nashville, Chicago, Detroit. I could just get home from work jump in the car, grab the family, and go to a local game. So, through and through, I'm hockey all the way. Thanks, CJ. Steven? Uh, Steven Rickard. Um, I don't know if anybody knows me or not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, grew up a lifelong Kansas City Chiefs fan. Got tired of them losing every stinking year. Started watching this thing called hockey on TV. And then went to uh, Kentucky Thoroughblade Games in uh, at Rupp Arena, and then uh, the Predators came into existence, and I went to a lot of Nashville Predator games. And with me being in the radio and stuff like that, I said, "Man, I would love to do what those guys are doing, either between the benches or out in the crowd." And and then I heard that. We were getting hockey here in Evansville, so I found the guy that was putting it together, sent him some stuff that I've done on radio, and the rest, as they say, is history, eight, eight years later. And I get to do what those guys in Nashville do, so and it's been the greatest eight years of my life. And for everybody that doesn't know, this is our MC at the Ford Center for all of our home games. And it, correct me if I am wrong, what is the number of Iceman games that you have missed ever? The one, the number that I've missed. Missed. Zero. Exactly. Yeah. This man has been to every single home You're game the in the history of the hockey team. Almost missed one thanks to a barge at the Twin Bridges. I remember that? <laughs> and uh, got all the way around halfway going uh, through Rio and Owensboro, or Owensboro and back around and. They said, it's open, so turn around and go back. And made it just in time for the opening announcements. So. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank tonight. you. Patrick? Hello, I'm Patrick McBrien, your resident horse head. <laughs> As you can say, I was born with hockey in my mouth. My parents were the boosters of the Iowa Oak Leafs back in the 70s, and as a five-year-old child, apparently was teased on the hockey puck at the rink. <laughs> Many grand memories of folding chairs and chicken wire. I came to see the Evansville Iceman their first opening night at the Ford Center. And I remember before the game started, the gloves were in the air and number 11, Mike Sproy, was just wailing on somebody. Kind of fell in love with it at the time. Hockey in Evansville, it's kind of like a rock and roll show, a sporting event or an ice cream all at one time. It's pretty cool. So, haven't missed any games since then. And go Iceman! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dixie Halber. Um, compared to these guys, I'm late to the sport of hockey. I became a hockey fan back in 98. I mean, not not going to do the math for you. But I was uh, living in Washington, D.C., and there was this hockey team called the Washington Capitals that were in the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time. And I wanted to see what all this hoopla was about. 
And I thought, well, this is a local team. I'm going to get on the bandwagon. And I'm going to see what it is. I watched games on TV. I had no idea what was going on, uh, but I loved it. It was just fascinating. And about a year later, I met my now husband, who was a big sports fan, um, who loved hockey, started teaching me the game, took me to my first professional game um, at the, at the Veri now the Verizon Center in D.C., and just was in love with it ever since. We moved out here. Um, and then a few years after, about seven years, eight years, after, seven years after we've been here, I got told that this there's going to be this new uh, pro hockey team in Evansville, and I really needed to be a part of it. So I came out the first night, drove home from the Swander that night, and I said to my husband, you know, it wasn't real good hockey, but it was a lot of fun, <laughs> and we have been coming ever since, and been involved ever since the beginning. <laughs> Thank you, Dixie, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, so, for anyone that doesn't know the history of the Iceman, um, and I suspect there's many out there in internet land that don't, uh, the fancy arena, the Ford Center, the ECHL, that is not our beginnings. Uh, they are much more humble than that. Uh, very, sure. very, very, very humble. Very, very humble. Let's go, let's go back to the Swander days. Uh, tell me some of the stories, maybe your first hockey game at Swander, uh, the very first hockey game for folks that were there, and kind of some of your first impressions of the ice cream. Well, I, I love the quaintness of, of Swander, the, the close-knit groups. I mean, you had firemen, policemen, accountants, line workers, salespeople, trash men. I mean, you had had every mix all bunched in, shoulder to shoulder, what, 1,300 tops, yeah. if that, if that. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder, and you were all there for one reason, and that was, that was Evansville Iceman Hockey. And that's something that, that I enjoy about the pride of our city is once Evansville grasped onto something, they really grasped onto something. And everybody was there. I mean, it was it was a celebration of you had a great day at work, or it was maybe therapy from a bad day at work. Yeah. But the bottom line was we were all there together, and we all shared the same interest, and that was our Evansville hockey team. So that's what made me and our family really that's what got us all in on the Evansville Iceman hockey. I mean, again, we had started early with the NHL and things like that. So, like Dixie had kind of pointed earlier, you know, maybe the hockey wasn't that great, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And, I mean, to celebrate that, I mean, that, that was just a thing of beauty in Swander, and to see it grow from that is just awesome. Um, and again, being shoulder to shoulder, of course, you got to learn and, and meet new people. So again, it became this uh, this family that kept morphing and growing into a bigger family and a bigger family and a bigger family. To where this this may have been the only time you see some of these people, but you were excited because you had two or three times a week where, hey, I get to see Horsehead or I get to see Dixie or I get to, I get to hear Stephen on the mic. You know, I mean. Those, that was something to look forward to. It was something you marked on your calendar. It's like, it's Monday, but by God, I get to see him on Wednesday, you know? So that's where I fell in love with it. And in those early days, it was an all hands on that proposition. Because you didn't have this organization that you've got now with sales guys and, and all these people doing all these different jobs. You had two employees, one of which is still with the Iceman today. Bridget McDonald was the original employee with the organization. She has done every job imaginable down to equipment manager. She's taken home laundry and the uniforms and more. <coughs> and that was it. You had two people. And so if there was a job that needed doing, you did it as a volunteer. And that's why a large part of how this ownership came, I'm, I'm speaking of ownership of like the public to the team. Emotional. We're, yeah, we're very possessive of this team and we're very opinionated about this team. But that's because it was ours when we began. Because like I said, you had to do it. Fans would drive this old, there was an old decrepit school bus that the team used to use and they'd get a fan to drive it to games when they weren't driving in passenger vans. And I remember like Mike Williams, who, who doesn't come to games much anymore, came up from Owensboro to 
help install some lockers and swander. They said, so if something you needed doing, you stepped up and did it. Our, our you know, the house, Jack Howe and Jamie Huff who do the penalty box just volunteered and said, hey, we need somebody to do this. And they sat in the box and started doing it. And that's just what you did. So that's why so it's so much of our team because we were the ones out there every night helping to put them on the ice. So, and it is family. I've met wonderful friends through this that I've known since the beginning. And, you know, that are family now. So. Absolutely. <clears throat> You're okay, cuz. <laughs> so then, what was your experience as you were part of the production on game one? What was, do you remember what was that like? The very first time we had a Iceman game, it was a scrimmage of some kind or a, a preseason game, mm -hmm. and it was against. I guess just some college kids or yeah. something at the time. Like the, cause didn't you, did you as I still have their club team at that time? Uh, ish. Ish. Yeah. yeah. But that first time they put me in the box by myself and that lasted probably 10 minutes and I quickly figured that, help! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael Shockley that did the music, he sent his wife down, Amanda, to help with the scoring, to keep the scoring, and then that kept through the whole Swander years, uh, all three of the Swander years, and thank goodness she showed up or I would have made, that would have been my, probably my first and only game. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was awesome, and you talking about humble experiences, humble beginnings, you talking about 1,300 people, which the announced attendance was 1,950 that night. <laughs> no, 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 an inflated uh, number. Yeah. I'd never believe it. <laughs> but those early days, if we had 200 people those first few games, that would have been outstanding. Mm -hmm. And there was a sun. I think it was a Sunday game. It was one of the rare games when sunlight would beat through the windows of, of Swander, and <coughs> you really could hear yourself breathe it was so there was 20 people at best <laughs> on that Sunday afternoon game and now look where we are right eight years later right. one of my favorite things to do is I'm always in early the sports center setting for the book table because I like to be in there before the doors open so I stand up at on the concourse at the railing and look down and see the crowd especially on a busy night and Star Wars night will be like this and you see that crowd, and then those doors open, and those people rush in, and you think back to those days at Swander, and you just go, wow, look what we did. <laughs> this is so awesome, because yeah, there would be. But on the flip side of that, do you remember the, the big snowstorm that we had, the big ice storm in 09? We had sure yeah, the ice. And yeah. Kentucky was without power for weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had, and, because Swander was one of the things that the city got back up and running, had power, they cleared out the parking lot, there was a concert next door at Roberts, and I forget the country star because I don't know the country, but we still had that night a couple hundred people yeah. that had yeah. dug out, that had no power, that hadn't had showers, but they made an effort to come down and watch Iceman play, because yeah. that was that important to them. I was yeah. like, this is something special that we think, got going we lucked up. We, we lucked up when the, when the ice storm hit. We actually had several days before that next ice mm -hmm. game, and it really helped out everybody to yeah. kind of get themselves cleared out before we could actually go do something. And mm -hmm. when the day came along, it yeah, gave right. everybody, everybody a chance to get a little relief from all the stress of the week. So yeah, I remember that. I remember that day very well. Well, and I I can remember my first ice cream game because I, I'm I'm late to the table. Um, in that, I, I think that it was the entire first season before I kind of even heard, hey, wait, what? We got a hockey team? Um, and growing up around Chicago and being a hockey fan since I was a little guy, you know, I, I was very interested. And I didn't end up making it down to Swander till I think it was around March of the following year. Um, and it, it was a birthday present night. And, you know, the birthday present, it was goofy because it was two tickets to the hockey game. But you couldn't buy tickets, right? So I had to go down there the day of, you know, right before the game started and get the two seats. Um, and trying to explain offsides and icing and all that stuff to, to my young, compart my young uh, companion there that day. Um, 
But, you know, I, I almost felt late to the table because there was this fan base and the maniacs, as they're called now, you know, I mean, it was just, there was a, an energy at Swander that, that was really remarkable. And, and to be quite honest, when the original days got started with Swander and the original days of the Iceman, we stole everything we could steal uh -huh. from Section 303 <laughs> at the Nashville Predators mm -hmm. games. Their cell block 303 yep. and all the chants. And I'd been to a bunch of games and some other had been to games and we said, mm -hmm. well, let's try this, let's try this. And, and a lot of the stuff that they were doing in Nashville was stolen from our fans to help start to generate the chants and the songs and stuff like that. So, and so the, that's the the origins of the asylum and all the 117 stuff. It, and it, the, the word suck came straight from Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though that Maniacs came from Michael Shockley's Maniac Message Board. It wasn't called that then. One of the fans from Detroit. Detroit had a team called the Dragons their first year and there was a guy and his brother that would come and kind of troll that message board all the time. And that's where stuff happened because Facebook wasn't big yet. So that's where everything happened and he coined us maniacs in, a, in some post there. You guys are really crazy. You're like Iceman maniacs and we grabbed that and ran off with it. <laughs> So while we're talking about the origins of some of this stuff, I have a couple of questions. Who picked 117? Right? Uh, Brad, I think maybe. I, I think Brad must have been the first one. Off the top corner seat up there, and that was kind of... Because when I know... fell in line after. When I went to pick my seats, in, my seats oh. that year, because we hadn't, we, nobody had been in the Ford Center, it wasn't done. I walked up to the sales rep, I said, where's Brad Perkins sitting? Because I want to sit with him, and they said he's here in 117, and I took, I wanted a mid, you know, a midsection seat on the aisle, and I picked that one, and the Campbells came in and sat behind me, and then we just filled in, and he just kind of, I think, cheerily led from there, and, went, and then that's when we started calling it these. And I think, if, if I'm not right, excuse me if I'm wrong here, but I think that opening night, after we, after the game got started, and maybe in the first intermission. I think there was a lot of discussion about did we did, did we call this anything, and I think the name Asylum got tossed out there, and I got out there and I actually pointed over to your section and and, and called it the it. Asylum, yeah. and everybody screamed, uh, screamed and cheered, and and that may have maybe helped so it then call technically on. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was just acknowledging <laughs> like the, some of the discussion. Because we've been talking during the summer what to call it. Yeah. And, and the asylum had been had been kicked out there a few times. Yeah. And then Brad made the sign. Okay. So I remember that opening yeah. night. That was my first attendance to an ice cream in the Ford Center. And I was three sections over, and I saw what was going on in one seventeen. I'm like. That's where I want to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went to different sections a couple games that season and try and I bought a cowbell. People weren't real appreciative of the cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started buying tickets to Opera 117 and knew I'd found a home because there you were accepted. Yes. <laughs> and you could bang your cowbell. You can do what you can be as loud as you want to be in 117. So that just kind of came in from Swander too because that middle section at Swander was the rowdy section, that's where Perkins, that's where Brad sat. And then people that don't sit over there anymore had they kind of moved. I'm not sure that they're coming to games any longer. So that was just kind of the loud and rowdy section. So I said, I knew that's where I needed to be when we moved to the Ford Center. So I think it just kind of carried over from that middle section and wander. Sure, that's, I, I remember that first night as well. I was up top. My wife had got tickets to work because, I mean, they promoted the bejesus out of that game. And, I mean, that was a full arena that night. Mm -hmm. And we yes. were... <laughs> <laughs> we were up top and, and you could just hear it you know and it was you kind of had to keep hanging down over the side a little bit going what the heck is going on over there? <laughs> you know and over the years when I would sit in different spots you inevitably always ended up what are these folks doing you know and that's where the party's at we're sitting over here you know and we've even I've had seats in 117 further down and it's, you know, it's like Chicago and Springfield in Illinois. It's just, there's such a detachment that you're like, I, I gotta get back up in there. I gotta be part of this. I sat across the ice last day after Christmas 26 last year. My parents were in town. 
and they hadn't been to a game. They come to a Swander game, even though it was the championship game at Swander. My mother's not really a, a hockey fan, um, so I wanted them to see the point center and see what we had grown up to. So I wasn't going to subject my mother, especially to the asylum. However, I got traded my seat to the center over a glove, and it was like I need to be that. It was so quiet it's hard to leave. over there, and I'm like, oh man, this. <laughs> I need to be back. It's hard to go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the seats between the benches are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is a lot of fun. Fun times down fun. there. <laughs> Not G rated. Oh, no. Don't take your kids. <laughs> oh, but it's fun. <laughs> between two hockey benches? I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I see young kids down there, and I'm like, are you sure what you're getting into? Yeah. <laughs> So big, well, big kudos to Brad Perkins and all he's done with, with 117. There's really been a lot of good times, good memories made. We also had a marriage come out of 117. Two girls in front of him. Brad, uh, Melissa, and Eric. So, yeah. well, of course, I mean, Brad got married on the ice at Swanner. He did. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> so while we're talking about origins of different things, um, a resident horse head. <laughs> if you've seen it, if you're an Iceman fan, if you've seen anything on ECHL TV, uh, Twitter, what's the story? Where did, where did the horse head come from? Wait, wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, I want to hear this. <laughs> Boy, you're going to be bored with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the leftover part from a Halloween guy's <laughs> Part of the insanity of being a 117 for the first couple of years is like, Everybody's kind of got their own little shtick. Let's do something to turn it up. Let's have some fun because in 117 you feel like you're free to do and be whatever you want to be. So one day I saw this horse head. I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, why not? So I just brought it in and it got pretty big raves the first couple of games. And I started seeing other people with more horse heads popping up, and zebra heads and unicorns. And it's just been, it's been fun. People have fun with it. I see other people with horse heads. I'm like, yeah, my brothers. <laughs> There's no real story behind the origin of it. It was just part of that hockey mania and that madness that we all feel. It's like you can come to a hockey game, have fun, do anything you want, be who you want to be, just enjoy yourself, make make it make it make it fun. Right. So. My favorite memory of your horse head, and I think it was the night that I sat in club, I think. Oh. It was there was a hat trick. And all of a sudden I see this horse head flying in there, landing on the ice. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then walking past, go walking across the concourse, they laid out all the hats on the sales table, and there's this horse head. Landing. I stumbled down the stairs during the hat trick to get it over, throw the thing over, and it's a high five to all the way back. So, that was a Brandon Wong hat trick. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for joining us for part one. Uh, part two will be available shortly at thesinbin.net, and uh, be sure to stay tuned in.